All right. So this is a list of things that you should be doing for your business. It's going to be broken down into leads, what type of leads we should be working, how we should be working them. We have marketing, the different methods of contacting. We have closing a deal, what you should be doing to close the deal. We have confirmation, confirming funds, and then we have execution. And then there's a list of questions that you should ideally be um, making sure that you're executing every single week. All right. So starting with leads, anytime you guys are working a county, you want to start with their existing leads first. All right. So if you're looking at a list directly from the county, you know, sometimes they will share an excess funds list, a surplus funds list, a tax deed overbid list. You can find these lists online. You can do a simple Google search and you can put in keywords, surplus funds, excess funds, overbid funds list, and you'll see many counties that pop up. You can also request this list directly from the county. You guys can use the email template that is provided in the course. That is the same template that I use that I receive list that counties don't have public online, but they will share with you if you reach out to them. All right. Also, of course, we can use third party sites to get to this information, like Excess Elite, for example. You have many states that have counties, leads information, and leads that you can find. You can get the link directly to the excess proceeds list, all right? So the reason why we want to go after those existing leads first is because they're literally sitting there, all right? Those leads are there from the county as unclaimed. There can be some that are as old as two, three years old. There might even be some that are within that year. We want to get through that list as soon as possible so that we can get to the real leads that will lead to long-term success in this business. There's probably billions of dollars in America that's sitting around just for surplus funds alone that have already been sitting there for a long time. Now, these leads could be sitting there for a reason. There's a lot of leads that are in other countries, um, especially if you're looking at any claims in Orlando, Florida, which is Orange County, you'll see a lot of foreign investors. Same thing with Miami. Um, if you're looking at properties in New York as well, California, New Jersey, there's a lot of foreign investors. And sometimes those leads are difficult to locate. It's not impossible. It's just a little bit more difficult to locate them. So that could be a reason why they're still on the list. Could also be possible that maybe there are some small claims that are sitting at that list. We're going to get into that in a little bit as well. And then, of course, if you're working those lists that are already out there, you can run into clients that have already filed a claim or where a lien holder has filed a claim. And it's a part of the business, all right? If you go through the process of getting in touch with somebody and they're letting you know that they've already filed a claim or you get somebody up and then you find out that there's a lien, that is okay. Because what that's telling us is our systems are correct in terms of initial um, reach out marketing because we got a hold of this person. It just turns out that that claim wasn't valid. But if it was valid, we would still have gone through the same exact process. So your process is correct. It's just the lead is invalid. But we want to go ahead and get through all of those existing leads as soon as possible. So if you're making calls by yourself, go through, identify leads on that list that you feel are workable, prepare your skip tracing, and get after it. If you have a team, have your team prepare that list. You can even have them do pre-scrubbing before you even contact them, but you do want to contact them as soon as possible. Once we get those leads out of the way, we're now going to focus on pre-foreclosure leads. Pre-foreclosure leads are very important because they'll give us an upper hand on many levels, all right? The first upper hand that we'll get is we'll actually be able to reach out to clients and possibly get them under contract before there's any competition. All right, so we're gonna be reaching out to them, 
explaining to them that their property has value higher than what they actually owe. And if the property does sell for more, this can lead to surplus funds. Our company specializes in this. We'd love to assist you with filing this claim. We don't charge any upfront fees. We have a team of attorneys and we work directly with the county. All right, so we can get those leads under contract. Another reason why it's very important to do pre-foreclosure strategy, when we are looking at upcoming auctions, whether we're looking at an auction calendar or we're requesting a list of upcoming sheriff sales or tax delinquent sales from the county, when we look at properties that we can tell what is owed and we can see the value, we now gauge potential surpluses. So there might be an upcoming auction with about 20 properties. And if we can do a pre-foreclosure gauge and identify six potential properties that are gonna sell for a threshold that meets your criteria, when those properties actually do sell, we'll already have majority of the leads skip traced. So let's say out of that batch of 20, we do our pre-foreclosure, we identify six, then the auction actually occurs and it turns out 11 out of the 20 led to a surplus. Well, now we've already skip traced six out of the 11. We can go ahead and skip trace the final five. We're gonna contact them as soon as possible and we can retarget our pre-foreclosure leads. All right, so we gotta get into the habit of working those pre-foreclosure leads. And then when we are the first or second company contacting any leads that are fresh, we're putting ourselves in position to win. All right. So by working pre-foreclosure, pre we're going to put ourselves ahead of competition and we're going to make it easier to attack those fresh leads because we've already performed skip tracing. All right. Another place that we are getting leads from, of course, is going to be directly from county foreclosures. So if we um, see a list, we can operate on that. We're also getting leads from auction.com. So that strategy is in the course. We've done a few trainings on the auction.com strategy. Basically, we're going in there, you're harding properties beforehand, and then you're receiving an email and it's telling you which properties are sold to a third party. Then at that point, we're gonna go in, verify that the property actually sold for more than what was owed. And you're also going to see the trustees information and you can perform further research to identify the previous owner. All right, so the auction.com strategy is definitely something that you should be applying, all right? We also have XPLS Pro. XPLS Pro meets us into attacking fresh leads. We know that their site provides brand new leads, leads where the foreclosure has occurred and they're uploading that with the skip tracing. Now, whether you're working those leads by yourself or you're going through with them, those are good leads because they're fresh, all right? So we just stress the importance of pre-foreclosure and fresh leads. Auction.com is gonna give you fresh leads and also XPLS Pro. We should also be working leads under 10,000. This is something that intrigues a lot of individuals, but not many people actually execute this strategy. And it is a great strategy to use because you can make funds that can offset your expenses. Now, maybe you may not have the time to go ahead and call all of those leads, but you can definitely use an SMS strategy to reach out to those leads under 10,000. Think about it. If you only had to send a text message and you potentially could bring in 10 plus clients a month at 250, now you're making $2,500 a month. That can help your business. You can possibly hire new VAs. You can hire new callers. You can use that to pay for certain expenses. And getting 10 clients when you're working thousands of leads is not um, unachievable. All right. There's many leads that are just laying at the county that are under 10,000 that people are not contacting. We just have to have the correct marketing strategy, which now leads me into marketing, all right? It's one thing to identify the leads. I've gone over many ways that we can pull leads. Anybody can essentially find leads in this business. Finding leads is not an issue. Getting in contact with somebody 
is typically the issue that many people face. All right, so this document is called Things You Should Be Doing. We just went over what you should be doing in terms of leads. Now these are things you should be doing in terms of marketing. All right, so in terms of outreach, getting traction, getting communication from clients. All right, so of course we have calling. All right, you should be calling clients, reaching out to them. If you're calling them yourself, perfect. If you have code callers, even better. All right, when we are reaching out to them, we need to make sure that we are sending text messages. I've shared this strategy with you guys many times, a simple text such as, hello, is this? And their first name is something that can get you a response. We are looking for validated phone numbers when we are reaching out via text message. There are scenarios where you can close somebody completely through text. This happened before, I've posted about it and showed you guys. But essentially, we have to make sure because that is another method of contact. You guys know in the course, we have a section about the six methods of contact. All of these methods of contact will put you in position to actually succeed in this business. All right. We have calling. We have immediate text message or no answers. We also should be leaving a voicemail if possible. All right. So if this is a line and they have voicemails open, leave a voicemail. You might ask, what should I include in my voicemail? You can leave details about the property and tell them you're calling in regards to an open claim. It's very urgent. You can state your name, your company. You can give them enough information to make them intrigued and want to call you back. All right. We should also be using the double tap strategy. I've talked about this before. If you're calling leads and you only call once throughout the entire day, you have slim chances. Look at the percentages. If you just call a phone number one time throughout the entire day and you don't follow up, there's people who do this business where they do their research, they call a lead, they move on to the next one. They haven't sent a text message. They haven't left a voicemail. They haven't done any other forms of contact. And if you are doing that, keep in mind, this document is called things you should be doing. You should be double tapping following up later in the day. It makes sense. Even if you have a client where you reached out on a Monday, went through everything they didn't answer, you can also follow up on Thursday. You can follow up on Friday. If you just follow up in this business, you will put yourself in a situation where you can succeed. But if you just initially reach out one time and you move on to the next one, yeah, it's a numbers game. You'll get a deal eventually, but you're missing out on a lot of potential leads. All right, so double tap. Following up later in the day is definitely something you should be doing. If you have a cold caller, have them do that. We should also be performing social media research. All right. So in aspects of marketing, we're just looking. Marketing is getting in front of people. We need to get in front of these clients. We need to figure out how we can talk to them. We see who's owed money. We see how much they're owed. Our job is to reunite them. So we need to make our marketing efforts to get in front of them explain what it is that we do and how we can assist them. Social media is a means of communication, all right? We have calling, texting, email. We also have social media. You'll be surprised how many deals you can close through Facebook. A lot of people have Facebook. A lot of elderly people have Facebook. There might be times where we cannot find their phone number. We cannot get their email. Our outreach is not working but you see them on Facebook. Now, the thing with Facebook is you do need to have a personal Facebook page to do outbound messaging. Yes, it's great to make a business page on Facebook for your asset recovery business. You can post testimonials, you can post results, you can put articles about surplus funds. That's fine and dandy, but you cannot outbound message clients. If you want to outbound message them, it will have to come from a personal Facebook page if your current Facebook page isn't something that you believe is suitable to reach out to clients, simply make a new one. Make a nice professional Facebook page that is personal, and then you can perform your outreach. All right. Another thing is sending mailers, especially pre-foreclosures. You're going to have a much higher hit rate on sending mailers. Mailers, you'd also be surprised how many deals that you can close this way. 
I have a mailer um, template that's in the course. I also have video training that can show you how to send mailers. You can do this online with stamp. You can handwrite letters. You can go to the post office. You can do whatever you want to do. But sending mailers is another means of contact. All right. We also have SMS blast to pre foreclosures and SMS blast to leads that are under 10,000. All right. So this is a feature that you can do if you have a CRM. If you do not have a CRM, um, you might want to look into um, getting one. Excess Elite, the basic CRM plan is $20 a month. That will give you access to do Blast SMS. Um, so these are things you should be doing. You're going to put yourself in position to succeed and stay consistent. Whenever you're dealing with a numbers game, you want to constantly have a process in your business. Think about any business in the world. We can think about real estate agents, for example. They have a certain process. They're looking at what are the upcoming listings? What are the current listings? Who's looking to buy a home? Who is selling a home? They're constantly working on leads. They're doing work. They're constantly working and they're, they've created a process and a system to follow. If you look at wholesaling land, same thing. Their, their um, business model is pretty much like ours. It's just different aspects. They need to find leads. They need to do marketing. They need to call, text message, voicemails, Facebook. They need to do all of that initial outreach as well. So these are things that we should be doing in this business. All right. So we have our leads. We understand what type of leads we should be going after, why we need to be going after them. We have our marketing. These are all ways that are going to put you in position to actually have traction and communicate with clients. Another thing to realize is you should be reaching out to relatives, associates, however you can get in touch calling jobs. This is going the extra mile, and this is going to put you in position to succeed. Imagine if you did research on somebody, you couldn't find them, but if you just went and contacted the brother or sister, they could have led you to the right direction and provided that phone number, all right? So you definitely should be reaching out to relatives, associates, job. We have to make sure that we're reaching out every way possible. There's no stone unturned in this business. We are essentially private investigators. So we need to investigate, research, and reach out. So marketing is very important in this business. All right. Now, closing a deal. We just did an entire workshop on this on the last call, how to be a killer closer. And it's very simple. On our initial call, we're providing information. We're not trying to close them on that first deal. We're simply educating them, informing them on what happened. Your property sold for more than what was owed, which led to excess proceeds, surplus funds, overbid, additional funds, whatever you want to call it. Now we're looking to send them over information. All right. We can definitely help you out. Let me go ahead and send you over some information so this makes sense. We should be sending the intro email because now we have proof. All right. Now proof. Somebody messaged this in the uh, Facebook group. They said, I can't find the notice of surplus funds letter. And it was a, a state that was in Florida. Not all states provide a notice of surplus funds letter. Sometimes it could be in the certificate of disbursements. Sometimes they don't even have a letter at all, but you can send proof in many ways. You can send the auction results showing that the property actually sold for a higher amount. You can also send over the statute that says if the property sells for a higher amount, those funds are legally entitled to the previous owner and heirs. You can also send their name if you see it on the list. If you see somebody's name on a list, you can simply highlight that and send that over. And you can also send any other methods that you might have seen because the thing is you had to get the leads from somewhere. All right. So wherever you saw it, you're going to attach that as proof to your intro email. Then in our close, we went over this as a killer closer we're not questioning. We are informing. We are telling them what the next steps are. And those next steps are either scheduling a notary or we're sending them an agreement form. All right. So closing a deal, we have to make sure that we are assertive and that we are confident. All right. And of course, professional, knowledgeable and an expert. 
All right. Now, if we are attacking the correct leads and we are handling our marketing the correct way and we are going into our leads with confidence, we are going to have a high amount of leads that we potentially can work on. Now, what does this mean? This does not mean that we're just printing money. There are some leads that don't come through. So this is why confirmation is something that we should be doing. All right. So we are confirming with the county or the trustee that the funds are available. We're also getting the proper documents for a successful claim. All right. So once you have a client that's interested, you can go perform your research. Once you get an agreement form, you still want to do additional deeper digging. You want to make sure you have everything on point to submit a claim. Now, once again, it's a part of it. I've already explained this. You're going to get some clients that have already claimed it. You're going to get some clients where a lien holder is in place. Could be possible the bidder walked away, no longer a valid deal. Those things happen. It's a numbers game. We are making money from money that's laying there. Our expenses are not that high unless you have an entire team. But this is why I said we should be working these under 10000 to make income in the meantime for waiting. If you're doing this business all by yourself, you're sacrificing time. You're putting forth a lot of time for research. You're putting forth a lot of time for marketing, outreach, for scrubbing, all of that. If you have a team, you're now sacrificing funds to make all of those tasks much more efficient for your time. Now, you don't have to do as much time for research. You don't have to be doing skip tracing. If you have a caller, you don't have to do initial code calling. So we're always going to be sacrificing something to make this business work. It's going to be time or it's going to be money. But we are creating and generating money that's already out there. We're not asking clients to you know, purchase a certain product for 50 to 100,000, that money is literally already there. We just have to go get it, all right? Then we have execution. I told you guys, this is a list of things we should be doing. This is things that we need to know going into every single week, all right? If you're working a county, I've mentioned this many times, go check the county out and read how they accept claims, look at the claim form, understand it, figure out when they have auctions, understand their current excess funds list, become an expert in that county. These people are trusting you to submit a claim and have a successful payout. If you don't know how to do it, then why are you trying to help somebody in the first place? All right, so before you even start attacking leads, you need to understand that. All right, so going into the week, we should know how many upcoming auctions are occurring this week. If we're working multiple counties, Perfect. All right. We have Monday to Friday. All right. So what counties are hosting auctions on these certain days? What time are these auctions occurring? Because we need to make sure that we're on the ball and we can see what those properties sell for. All right. You also need to be asking yourself and your team, did you prepare the pre-foreclosure list? All right. We went over it earlier in leads. How important pre-foreclosure leads are. Once again, pre-foreclosure leads are going to give us the upper hand to get clients under contract to eliminate competition, and it's going to allow us to already have pretty much 50 to 60% of the new surpluses already skip traced, all right? So once we get that final sale, majority of the time, we've already skip traced most of that lead, okay? We also need to figure out, are these leads in skip trace ready format? So if we're constantly bringing in new leads, we need to make sure that they're getting skip trace accurately and efficiently immediately. So if you have virtual assistants, this is something you can be asking them. If you're doing this yourself, ask yourself, okay, go ahead, put it in that format. I've shared the template with you in the Facebook group and in the course as well. All right. Also ask yourself, have you been contacting leads via Facebook? Like I mentioned, these are things you should be doing, but everybody doesn't necessarily do it. Not everybody on this call is going to reach out to people on Facebook. The ones who do will have success. The ones who don't, you possibly could have success, but you are missing out on another means of um, communication. All right. We also have, did we send mailers? Another thing. Some people are going to do it. Some people aren't. It's another form of communication. If you don't do it, you're missing out. Are you double tapping leads to follow up? These are all things to hold you accountable because 
there's a lot of different aspects in this business and you can get sidetracked and you can start focusing on other things. But if you ask yourself certain questions every single week, we can make sure that we actually execute. Execution is everything in this business. Somebody can learn all the ins and outs, take all the great notes they want, but if they're not executing and applying the information, then they simply won't have success. All right, another thing, are you responding to leads that text back? So if you are sending out that immediate text message to phone calls that they do not answer, you're gonna be getting response. If you don't have a CRM, you should be texting them, hello is this, boom, their first name. If you have a CRM, you should be checking, seeing the communication coming back. Like I mentioned, if you don't have a CRM, Excess Elite's basic CRM plan, meaning that you don't get the lead county database and you don't get the skip trace leads, but you do get the CRM, that is something good for $20 a month. You can call, text, email, you can make a website, you can do everything at just $20 a month, all right? We also have, are you um, leaving voicemails? Another thing, holding you accountable. Are you being lazy when you call? Are you just simply going to the next one? Or are you putting forth that effort, all right? So leaving a voicemail is something that can close deals. I just did a student success story today. It'll be up on YouTube tonight. She mentioned how she left the voicemail. Leaving voicemails work, all right? Then another thing, when you actually get somebody on the line, are you informing them of what happened at the foreclosure, describing the surplus, then asking for email to send over information? This gets into the closing. We should just be initially providing information and then trying to send them over proof. It will make your call much more efficient and you will be able to leverage a lot of the information there. All right. Now, this is a list of things that you should be doing. Like I mentioned, not everybody's doing this, but the ones who have success they're doing majority of these things. They may not be doing everything and I, you don't necessarily have to do everything. I want you to do everything, but you may not necessarily have the means to do it. You may not have the time, you may not have the funds, but that's okay. If you do most of the things or as many of the things on this list as possible, you will put yourself in a better position to succeed. So I'm gonna share this document with you guys. I highly